I'm so thankful. Praise the Lord. Let's pray just a moment. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. I want to thank and praise thee for your sweet presence today and tonight. Lord, we praise thee now, Jesus. I pray you'll give me a new anointing from heaven. Give me divine, give us divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're wondering what that semi is out in front there, that's uh, Randy Millington, a truck driver driving through in Pennsylvania, stopped here for our service. I believe he's here someplace. And uh, his parents were in our church in Marion, I mean Mentone, Indiana. And the main reason I mentioned that, I thought of their faithfulness. They've, they've driven for years over 100 miles to get to church every Sunday, over a hundred miles. And I think that's something. And they've done it, I believe, for years, and as far as I know, they still do it. I'm not sure. But I thought of their faithfulness, and that's a wonderful heritage Randy has. Randy, we're glad you're here tonight. Uh, now, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Genesis. I want us to look... <clears throat> Here in the 15th, the 12th chapter, first of all, and then a cut one verse, I think, in the 15th chapter, the 12th chapter. I want us to take a little look at how to approach this coming year. And uh, I'm trusting that God will help us. Some time ago, several Sundays ago, I spoke to you on... Uh, the fact that what God does in every generation, hardly anybody knows what he's doing. And therefore, it takes faith in that generation to walk with God. If you have to see it, uh, you'll miss the road. So it takes faith because, in, as I think I mentioned in that message, when the Israelite or Hebrews... Uh, slew the lamb, nobody knew what that the lamb was a man. Nobody knew it. Nobody knew who Jesus was when he was born, uh, except the few that it was revealed to. But otherwise, all that was taking place, nobody knew. And uh, even in Jesus' own brothers didn't know him. So what was taking place in, in every generation, God demands of that generation that they walk by faith. So this generation, this day, we are going to have to walk by faith this coming year. And I want to continue a little bit that same thought that I had with that message. I want to continue it tonight. In Genesis, the 12th chapter, beginning with the first verse, it says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And uh, I'll not read any more of that. The main thing, God spoke to Abraham and told him to get out of his country to a place that God would show him. Now, here is a revelation from God. And I, I want you to notice something. I doubt, I doubt very much that Abraham began to shout and praise God over that revelation. I doubt that he walked into Sarah and said, Hallelujah, praise God, I got a revelation, we're going to Cain. I doubt that he did that. If anything, I have an idea there was a note of soberness over him as he went into Sarah and said, Look, God has spoken to me, and we have to go to Cain. Where is that? I don't know. Uh, what's it like? I don't know. And uh, he, he couldn't shout over something that he didn't know much about, but he went by faith. It says in Hebrews 11th chapter that by faith... He went out, not knowing where he was going. So Abraham moved and went by, by faith, and he did, not, he did not go by emotion. Now, I want to tell you, I love to be in an emotional service. And I'm thankful for those, and I was thrilled with the emotion that I felt this morning. When Brother Darrell got up and shouted like he did, I felt like we all were shouting with him inside and wanted to go with him. And if he did, I don't know, if he had started, maybe we'd all been on our feet. It was marvelous. But we can't move through 1992 with emotion. Now, guys, wonderful when God gives it, and we receive it, and we're thankful for it. 
But uh, revelations must be taken by faith and not by emotions. A Holy Land trip must be taken by faith, not by emotion. You don't go because you're thrilled to go. Now, there may be a few that have been there that are thrilled to go, but I have an idea many are going because of faith. So Abraham started by faith, and if you start this new year, it's going to have to be by faith. Now, I want us to look in Genesis, the 15th chapter, the first verse. <clears throat> Abraham, when he got there, and uh, I'll not go over the details of it, but there was a, his nephew Lot was captured uh, by a war that was going on, and uh, Abraham went after them and uh, released or rescued his nephew Lot and brought him back. And then in the 15th chapter, the first verse, it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not. Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now, may the Lord add his blessing here to the, to the reading of his precious word. God met Abraham and said, Abraham, don't be afraid. He had been with these kings in battle and rescued Lot and... Uh, God said, Now, Abram, I am thy shield. Now, I think I mentioned before that a shield is something that stands between you and the enemy. And God said, Now, Abram, I am thy shield. Don't, don't be afraid that anything that comes to us in 1992 and whatever God said to Abram, he says to us. Anything you find that God's speaking to these men is yours. So when he said, I am thy shield, he says the very same thing to us. I am thy shield, which means that nothing can get to you in 1992 but what it's got to get past God. God will stand there. Nothing will get past him. He's a shield in front of us and above us and all around us. He's, he's a shield to us. And so nothing can get to us except... Uh, it got to pass God first. In Isaiah 41.10, God said, Fear not, I am with thee. This is the heritage of God's saints. And in Hebrews the 13th, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we're thankful that God says that. But now I want you to notice here, he said, I am thy exceeding great reward. Now he didn't say I'm your reward. He said, I am your great reward. We often think of reward as things. Uh, you're going to get a reward for serving Jesus. Well, what is it? Is it a new car, a new home, or new clothes, or is it something like that? But Jesus, God said, I'm your reward. Now, I look at this, and I want you to know that God says the very same thing to us today. I am your reward. And when God makes a promise to us, does that excite you? Probably doesn't. Come on now. God said, I am your reward. What's there to get excited about? Come on now. We read it and uh, it really probably doesn't excite us or thrill us very much. We read it and think, well, that was wonderful. God said that to Abraham, but it doesn't excite us very much. But God said, I am thy exceeding great reward. Now, I want you to know that when God makes a promise, that it doesn't look very exciting or very promising. To go with God and his promises often look foolish. Instead of exciting, they look foolish. In Abraham's day, I don't think he was very well thought of. It looked like, it looked like that Lot got a greater reward than he did. Lot was his nephew and went along with him. And it looked like that Lot got a greater reward. God, Lot chose the green grass of the valley, and he became, he was rich. He went down into Sodom. He was well respected, well thought of, lived in a fine home, and poor Abraham lived out on a tent on the hillside. And when God and the Lord and the angels came, all he could do was sit him under a tree. Isn't that what the same Bible says? 
He said to them, sit under the tree, and I'll go fix you something else. Where he went down to Lot, Lot had a nice home to entertain him in. But Abraham didn't have anything to entertain him in and had to take him over and sit him under the tree. He said, you sit down here, and I'll have my wife go fix you something to eat. That's the best he could offer him was to sit under a tree. Yet Abraham had the promise, Lot didn't, but I want you to know, if you were living in that day, who did it look like was really being blessed? Now, I'm just suppose you were back in that day and say, I want to tell you, Abraham's, Abraham's blessed, he's out of the tent. And you mean Lot isn't blessed? Look at him, he's rich, he's well respected, he's a judge in the city, he's got a fine home, and look at him, and you tell me Lot's the one that's blessed. Or oh, Abraham, which one is blessed? You say Abraham's blessed, looks to me like Lot's the one that's blessed. When God makes a promise, it often looks like the... But notice that God said to Abraham, I'm your reward. The reward of Lot was the green grass of the valley, the respected position, judge in the city, the wonderful home, all of these things. That was the reward of Lot. But God said to Abraham, I'm your reward. Now, which one God blessed? So Lot chose all of these, and Abraham lived, as I said, in a tent and couldn't do anything but offer the Lord and the angels to sit under a tree while Lot gave them a place in his home. I think unless you had faith, if you lived in that day, I think you would have said, now look, Lot's maybe God's reward of Abraham, but I believe Lot's got the best of the deal. What is this telling us? It's telling us that if we walk with God, the great reward may not be apparent for a while. How easy it is to feel like when we're under the blessing of God, we think in terms of things. When God said to Abraham, I'm your reward, but it didn't look much like it, how many missionaries have been thought and said, Brother, you're a fool. You could have stayed home and been worse. I'm out into something. You're going over there to a foreign country and wasting your life. It still takes faith to walk with God. The reward may not be apparent at the time that God says, Follow me. The reward often isn't seen at the time. Here, these, This is 3,000 years later, and I'm being blessed by Abraham. Who could have foreseen how far the blessing of Abraham would go? If you walk with God, who can see how many will be blessed by your life? You may say, well, I'm not concerned about the future. I'm concerned about the present. Well, I want you to know that God's blessings go on out into eternity. Anything that God, when he's your reward, that blessing will never end. It'll go on out into eternity. Everything in the area of things like Lot end. But God does not. I want you to know that the blessing that God gives go on out into eternity. As I look at Lot and I can see, I can see when I look at Lot, I can see what a great mistake he made. I read the story in the Word of God, and uh, I can look at it, but the reason that I can see he made a mistake is that I can turn the page in my Bible and I can read the outcome. I want you to know that Lot couldn't turn the page. He couldn't see the outcome. And I want you to know that you can't turn the page on your life either. You don't know the outcome in your life any more than Lot did on his. But I can turn the page here in my Bible and read the outcome, and Lot didn't know that Sodom would be destroyed and that he'd finally lose everything he had and wind up in a cave, and the story leaves him. The Bible leaves him. I don't know anything else about Lot. The Bible leaves him in a cave. Having lost everything, I can turn the page and see that he couldn't. And you can't turn the page in your life. Therefore, God is your great reward, and it may look like a fool to walk with him today. It may look like Lot was prospering then, and it may look like others who are going after things are prospering. But I want you to know the one who has God is the one who has the great reward. So he couldn't see Sodom, and it's all of his destruction, and you can't see it. 
It would have been very easy in that day to have looked and said, well, look, you say Abraham's got the reward, but I tell you, it sure looks like Lot's prospering. Look at Abraham, who was prospering. Look at him, you say. Well, he had God for his reward. When I look at the end, I know that Abraham, I know that he was the wise man. But in his day, you wouldn't have known it. So today, who is the wise man today? Who is the man today? The man that's trusting God, walking by faith, and his reward is God himself. But you may not know it by looking at his life. Look at the end of Abraham. He lost nothing. Uh, his blessing, he left a blessing to his son and to future generations. And if I today, I turn to Abraham for encouragement... I don't turn to Lot. Lot offers me no hope. Lot offers me no encouragement. Lot offers me nothing. And yet in his day, it looked like he was the one that was being blessed. But today, he offers me nothing. He offers you nothing. So Jesus says, those that are persecuted for righteousness say, great is their reward. Doesn't mean necessarily in things. Look at Saul who said, uh, going after the things of the world and finally wound up by saying, I've played the fool. And Jude, it says, go not after the heir of Balaam for reward. He tried both worlds and lost. And Judas, it says, purchased the field of iniquity with the reward of iniquity, purchased the field and plunged to his death. I like something Tozer said, faith can wait. I think of the Millingtons traveling 100 miles. I used to travel to Chicago to hear Dr. Tozer. So many of the things he helped me, uh, when I'm, Brother Al was mentioning on the wisdom, that's when I got most of those thoughts from Dr. Tozer, a great man of God who, had, who was a great saint. A lot of the reward in following Jesus is still future. It still takes faith to walk with God, to get to it, to see it. I think of Abraham now and Lazarus in his bosom. He's not in a tent anymore. He's in the glories and wonders of heaven with Jesus and all the glories that are asking now if he was a fool. When he walked as a stranger and a pilgrim in this old earth and lived in a tent and walked by faith to bless the world, ask him now if he's a fool. Maybe you would have said so in his generation. But I'm thankful that he isn't. The Bible talks about uh, in Hebrews, that 11th chapter, the Hebrews of the faith, all of those people by faith, the way they lived, and many of them suffered and died. And it says there in the word, the word of God, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That's all of these Hebrews of the faith from Cain on down. There are the great cloud of witnesses encouraging us on. Look at the Apostle Paul. Ah, uh, you could have said, Paul, you were a fool. And he tells all the things that he gave up. He was often hungry and persecuted and naked at times. Ask Paul now if he was a fool. He was caught up to the third heavens and saw things that he couldn't utter. As I said in Hebrews, all of these people, then the Hebrews of the faith, they're encouraging us on. But I want you to notice Lot's not in that list. He's not encouraging us. He's got nothing to help me. If I need help today, I don't turn to Lot. If I need help today, it's Abraham that's encouraged me. Lot's not saying stick to it, brother, it's worth it. He's not saying a word to me. It's Abraham that's saying stick with it, brother. It's worth it. You hang on. Don't you give up. It's Abraham, the one they thought was a fool, that's encouraging us there 3,000 years later. Lot isn't encouraging me. He's offering me nothing. It's going to take faith to walk with God today. And the world may say you're a fool, but brother, these that have walked by faith are saying, stick with it, brother. It's worth it in the end. You stick with it. So I'm trusting that God will help us in 1992 to walk by faith, regardless of what the situation looks like. Do what God says and trust the outlook. The world may say, brother, you're a fool. But let them say a time is on our side, as Dr. Tozer would say. Time is on our side. Time will tell who's right. 
So to 1992, we're going to have to walk by faith. It may not look good. It may not look promising. But God is still the reward of his saints. He is our it doesn't, and I like what the Bible says. It doesn't say he's our reward. It doesn't even say he's our great reward. It says he is our exceeding great reward. God himself. Why? Because then that's everything we need. There isn't anything that you can stand and have need of that isn't in that reward. So I trust God will help us to walk by faith, for we have the great reward, the shield and the great reward.